Gun test stun cut. Yeah, you know that's us. Where we only speak the real and the real rock with us. Where we motivate the people and the politic on success. Oh no, we ain't DJ Kelly, but they swear we the best. Gun check. 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 What's happening? It's Contrast Uncut. It's season four. This is my Spotlight R&B episode. I want to give a big shout out to Uncle Snoop's Army and Bobby D Presents. I appreciate you, brothers. It's your host, Zylo, aka DJ Juan Dollars Like I Won Some Money. Today, we have a really incredibly dope, dope special guest. I mean, you can't talk about love music. You can't talk about, you know, any type of breakups. You can't talk about so many things without bringing up this brother to get you through it. And he's from the land, Cleveland, Ohio, to be exact. He's a multi-platinum and billboard charting singer, songwriter, and producer. He's one of the most influential voices of the 2000s when it came to love making. Personally, I have been through breakups, arguments with my girl to get in the girl <laughs> the lyrics from your song when I knew nothing about love to make it love with your music playing in the background. You know, with the 20th anniversary of the first album, My Thoughts, with the hit single that originated from a poem, Separated, spawned to making this brother his first album, Reasertified Platinum. And you know, as the rest say, it's been history. With nine studio albums out later, billions of streams and views collectively, with hits like Making Good Love, Don't Take Your Love Away, Read <laughs> the Pine, Four Minutes, you and I, just to name a few. And if you don't know who I got on the show by now, it's all good. We got all episode to chop it up with the brilliant mind behind his latest album, Can We Fall In Love? Avant, everybody, how you doing? Yo, man, thanks for having me. Great intro, too, man. I appreciate the love, man. Like you said, it's been 20 plus. And, uh, you know, just see how music transitioned and changed so much. It's pretty amazing to me. Oh, yeah, I love it. And you definitely have not stopped on the progress of that at all. When it was a yeah. time to change, you was ready for the change. You was like, hey, I'm we gotta part do of it. it. We got to do it, bro. You know, a lot of times people don't understand. Um, it's not about your music getting old. It's about you keeping up with the times. And what I mean by that, I'm not trying to say I'm trying to keep up with the young people. But us as older people, we we have new issues every day all the time. Now, how, 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 how can you um, adjust to that type of thing? So, you know. I've been blessed to be able to do so, man. And um, I just thank all my fans out there, man, for supporting real music, you know? Oh, yeah. And that's the key word right there, real. And that's something that you have real genuine feelings, emotions, affection of whatever so have you from your music. And you help us get through so much. And you're absolutely right. I mean, we can go all the way back to Hand of Time to, you know, The Temptations to, to Marvin Gaye to... You know, so many legendary people, uh, Frankie Beverly and the Maze. Just oh yeah, oh yeah, man. And we uh, we we holding those torches too. That's what I want these young kids to understand. You know, when you get in this music game, it's not it shouldn't be all about you. It should about it should be about the legacy of music. You understand? So, it's certain things I just won't do because it's going to taint the legacy of music. You feel me? So I always keep that in the back of my head every time I'm in the studio recording something. I'm thinking about the legends and how they open the door for us and how I want to open the door for the new legends coming in, you know? Yes, yes. And that right there is time. And I want to tell you that time is the most finite thing we have on this earth. And I got to tell you from the jump of this interview, how much I appreciate your time, fucking with me, fucking with the viewers and, you know, being transparent, brother. I, I appreciate that so much. Oh, thanks for having me, man. It's, you know, I think that's what life is about. I think, us as artists, we get caught up so much into ourselves, we forget, bro, it's because of the fans that we are in the position we're in. Yes. You know what I mean? So who really deserve the credit, you know, at the end of the day? And who should we be paying homage to at the end of the day? When we figure that out, then we'll understand how much music really means to everyone. You know what I mean? Not just us personally, but everyone. You know what I'm saying? We could talk somebody off the ledge, just by putting the right words together. Facts. You know what I mean? That's very important to people to understand that. 
you know, from a consumer standpoint, you attract wealth, brother. Your voice, you know, your your selection of wordplay, your selection of emotions to give off, to go along with the theme of that beat or that that production. And, you know, a lot of people don't understand that to attract wealth, you have to provide. And when you provide that, you also have to understand what comes with that presence, that accountability. And you've been able to handle that, brother, with a good smile on your face and, wow. and travel the world. And you continue to pay homage to the fans because any good restaurant, any good clothing store, any good anything that sells something, if you don't have any patrons, you don't have people coming in and spending money, Man, you don't have a business. There it is. I mean, you look at it, you know, this election year that we've gone through right now. Um, look at, you had, man, bro, you had on both sides of the coin, 71 million people following one person, 74 million people following the other. Bro, we need the people. I don't care how you look at it, bro. We need the people. You know what I mean? To, to make this thing happen. So always understand your voice, your, your voice and your vote do count yes. in every way understand that and you know we put these people on pedestals you know what i mean and i'm talking about me as a consumer and you as well you put you put people on pedestals and you hope that they can survive on the pedestal that we put them on and not get so caught up in themselves you understand yes you know that was so deep that that you dropped the gem from the very beginning i was like a 30 carat diamond i don't know if people can have that on their heart and on their chest mm -hmm. to deal with. But you know what? It's out there. Y'all can hit rewind. Y'all can run that back one time. But I'm going to keep on moving forward because mm -hmm. I want to know what is a normal 24 hours for you, Avant? Oh, you know, I got um two kids, man. I got a, a young lady, too. You know what I mean? So my whole point is, man, I try my best to give the best me. Yes. You know, to dig that. You know what I'm saying? So people don't understand. Like, I don't, I can't be nobody else. Really but, it, you know, I want my kids to understand. My son's 17 years old. He went through a little breakup. Bro, it's okay. Daddy been through that. But you got to be open up enough. I got to open him up enough so he feel comfortable to talk to me about them that type of things. Because, you know, like I know as a, as, a, as a person, man, it's hard to deal with stuff by yourself. When you, you know what I'm saying, you just got to hold everything in. Bro, I'm here to talk to you about it. I want you to also know that, hey, it's going to be new, better days ahead. Trust me. I mean, it seems crazy right now. It seems doom and gloom right now. But guess what? Even with the coronavirus, it's going to be better days ahead. We got to understand that. We got to keep that in focus in everything that we do. Then I have a seven or eight-year-old daughter. Hey, she's so into TikTok and all these other things. You know what I mean? I'm like, yo, I'm learning new stuff from her. But that that's because I never stopped my mind from learning. Yes. You see what I'm saying? And a lot of a lot of us, as we get up in age, it's like, yo, now I, I got it. No, you might as well just roll over then and let it go. Because guess what? It's it's new stuff to learn. It really is. That's real. No, from one dedicated father to the next dedicated father, I got to give you your flowers for being a dedicated dad and, you know, showcasing to kids, your children especially, that they don't spell love with money. They spell it T-I-M-E. It is. You, you made it real clear that from your 24 hours, it's about happy wife, happy life, and it's about the children. It's about your your investment into this world and what you put out. Everything I'm glad you used that word. Man. I'm glad you used that word because I want people to understand too, man. It, everything in life to me is an investment. You got to understand. Love is so crazy. I'm about to hit you with another gym. <laughs> Love is, is, is something that you fall in and out of, okay? So I don't need you to love me. What I need you to do is respect me because mm -hmm. respect is something you never really lose for someone. It takes a lot for you to lose respect for someone. You understand? But love, I can love you today and be like, yo, I don't really feel like dealing with them. You know what I'm saying? Tomorrow, I'm like, yo, it's cool. you know what I mean? But when you respect someone like Barack Obama, you know what I mean? You you would do going to do nothing to disrespect that person. Period. So I think they need to put a lot more on respect, and I think we'll move much for, further in this world. Oh yeah, no, it's admiration. Like a lot of people dismiss that. I learned yeah. from, from the homie D Smokes, and I didn't even realize I did it. But when you grow up in the hood and you're trying to maneuver, and you got this color skin, you got to find other ways where you don't get robbed, beat up, or nothing. 
You got to build your way. And I always head not down. I don't head not up. It's always been natural to me. Head not down. Give your respects on the jump. And, you know, it's gotten me through where I'm still here breathing, smiling and telling stories. But at the same time, people take that same notion of they demand respect. And it's like, when, well, when you demand respect, there's someone bigger and better every time. Right, right. So you can't be, I would rather you respect me. I don't demand it, but I, you, you, I, it's on you because I ain't got to deal with you. If you don't respect me, it's fine. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, I'm looking for you to respect me more than, I, than to love me. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, I just say, hey, like if I got some employees that work for me, I don't need you to love me, just respect me. We be all right. Because I'm going to respect you. So, you know, I got this quote. And, you know, I always tell my guests, let me know how this quote relates to you or if it doesn't. But as we're talking about what's real respect, there was a word in there called love. And love can be picked up and dropped. But my quote is about love, and I want to know how you, you know, how it relates to you or if it doesn't, because here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've got a real love thing going. I love people, I love life, and I love nature. And I can't see why other people can't be like that. Marvin Gaye. I think that was a beautiful quote because it's a fact. See, because one thing is, this is so crazy. It's to me, it's respect first and then love falls in. Mm. See, because this is this is how it goes, okay? You might cheat on your girl, right? But if you, you got a best friend, you will do nothing to, re, to to lose their respect. See what I'm saying? So you respect them and love them at the same time. So what he's saying is totally true, but he he respect whoever he's talking about, he respect them so much that he loved them. You see what I'm saying? You see how I play? That's what it is. But if you love me first, ah, ah, it's something about you. I don't know about that. You know what I mean? Because you can't, you got to make that respect level first. You got to get that respect level first for me to know that you genuinely love me. That's so deep, but it's so real. It's real, it's bro. Transparent because people will be washed up on the emotion and forget that you gave the first impression from the jump. There it is, bro. See, now you just broke a jam out. People got to understand what you just said. You get washed up on the emotion. What happens? We can still, we can be at, at a club and we can be, Oh my God, it feels so good. Baby, you feel so good. But guess what? Then we go home and we learn how to do that one thing together. And we good at that. You know what I mean? Then we end up having a baby where we never ever, establish that respect for one another we skipped that whole that thing hold up that, that thing over why because we was in a, a, a good lit up nicely lit spot drinks popping good oh my god this emotion Emo love is emotion yes it's also a language yeah it's a language so we both speak in the same language right now but you cannot skip over respect because think this will this will really hit you hard. If you respect that person, you're gonna say, hey, you know what I mean? We ain't even gotta pop off the first time. Mm -hmm. You dig what I'm saying? You'll be like, yo, I see you a little different than that. You know what I mean? Like I want you to be a little different than that. That's because you respect them. Uh who? That's a <laughs> game right there. If you don't understand game, you feel me? And you don't have to get somebody a little bit older and wiser to tell you something. Because hey, that right there is so much game, boy. Hey, <laughs> you can run Game Boy back and forth like it's uh, 1990 again. <laughs> That's real, bro. That's real, though. Talking about the music industry, did the game choose you or did you choose the game, Avant? You know what? I choose the game, man. And I'm still choosing the game to this day. You know what I mean? One thing I, I can say is a lot of artists that has let the game cho choose them. And that's when you start seeing the the downfall of, of, of the, the, the artist and the game. You know what I mean? Once you can understand that I respect the game, I choose you. Just like your girlfriend. You know what I mean? If I'm choosing the right girlfriend because if I let her choose me, ain't no telling. I don't have the control. You dig what I'm saying? You right. always want to be in control of your situation. So yes, I choose the game and I have no problem with telling them that. And guess what? There's certain songs I won't be on. 
because I choose the game. I choose my game. And I think, you know, a lot of people lose respect because they want to hit records so bad that they let the game choose them. So now you put yourself in the situation. It's like, wow, I shouldn't have did that record with him because he beefed with him. And then, oh, now all of a sudden you caught up in a crossfire, bro. Why? Because you let the game choose you. You ain't choose the game, bro. See, now you breaking down something so important. It's the long route versus the short route. It's to get paid yeah, real quick and get lost in the sauce of the paperwork, or it's to take the long route, be independent, and enjoy the route. Enjoy the process. Enjoy the If I can tell down. anyone out there, if you listening right now, first off, go get my, my new album, Can't We Fall In Love. Please, go do that, please. And the tour. But if I can tell anybody out there right now, the game is not about, again, you got to choose the game first. But the game is not about getting money. The game is about staying open, staying, uh, you know what I'm saying, employed, keeping your business open. Because guess what? Money comes after that. You got to keep your business open, bro. It ain't, look, fast money is cool. Fast money run. I don't want my money to run. I want it to flow. Facts. Uh, Avon, brother, I feel like this is going to be one of them high capacity magazines that's full of diamonds that shoot out. <laughs> you know me? And it's it's legal because freedom of speech. But number two, you know, contrast a cut is it's, it's a, a rare platform where we promote people to understand that you don't have to be afraid of success. And you right. have to praise brothers for what they've been able to accomplish because within that own journey of yourself, there's been so many speed bumps and potholes that you've been able to go over or go through then mm -hmm. and, and overcome that, you know, those are the gems that we're able to relinqu relinquish today. That's a fact, bro. And you got to understand one thing for sure, man. Every day is something going on with somebody. They might not tell you, but it's something going on with somebody. So you respect them as an artist or whatever, you know what I'm saying, a businessman or whatever they do. Like I said, the key word is what? Respect. respect. You know what I'm saying? You respect them as that, and you move on. You learn from that. You know what I mean? You learn from them in certain ways. You use that to catapult you in a different direction, take you to another level. All, all of this is about levels. It's all about levels, how far you want to go up. But you got to know how to manipulate the levels. You understand? Come on. A lot of people want to get, they want to come straight in and go from one to the fifth floor. A one to the 12 flow. And it's like, yo, bro, once you get up there, you don't even know how to handle what you just, all these levels you didn't pass. You know, you're so, talking you know. about something so important. People always want to arrive at a destination. I'm taking off. I'm going to go conquer the world. I'm going to become the number one everything. And then as soon as they get in the air, however amount of time they in the air, they forget they got to come down and arrive at come what on, they're bro. supposed to do. Come and on, what happens. come on. A lot of people like to go ahead and spin around and think there's a fork in the road and make a U-turn and then they on to doing something else. And then you got some people that never quit and they have so much to talk about on this journey. And it's something man, that bro, breaks. That's just a fact. See, you understand, man. One thing is for sure. I'm talking from experience. You dig what I'm saying? Hey, I, hey, I, I took my plane off a few times. Like, yo, we are, we go. When I get out there, it's like, yo, I got to make sure. I ain't got nobody. I, the theft is not happening no more. You know what I'm saying? Because that first couple of years, you know what I'm saying? This is how you got to, you know, bring, wow. You got to get that person out the line. You know what I'm saying? I got to get him out the, um, out of, out of, out of my, my, my factor. You know what I'm saying? Now I got to move on to the next move. So I'm telling you as a person that's been through it, bro, you understand it, how you have to under, respect every level. Mm. Take it for what it is. Because it, it's, look, it's going to be wins and losses on every level bro facts you know what i'm saying so you gotta take my father used to tell me son you gotta take the crookest with the straights now i understand i ain't know that before i understand it now though you know what i mean like hey you're gonna have wins and losses on each level but guess what if you stay in business you're gonna be all right bro come on come on See, that's something that people forget. It's, it's not the fact that the person rode the bench. It's the fact that he's still in the game and we're, we're watching, we're supporting. Man, come on, bro. But see, a lot of times this game is so hinged on, you know, you blowing up real fast. And people see, I, 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 it's so crazy because we're talking about these levels and we're talking about how it's, it's a marathon and not a sprint. 
I just seen a lot of people sprint past my black ass. You know what I'm saying? And then they they fall in the ditch. And you know what I'm saying? I'm like the turtle. I'm just you know what I'm saying? taking my time. I'm still moving, baby. You know what I mean? Right. But that's the nature of it. Why? Because I respect the game. Mm. That's that word again. I respect the game. And the game, like they, an old pimp told me, hey, you respect the game. The game won't respect you. Come on. That's, that's, that's real. That sound, it, it goes over people's head like air and water. The only time they recognize is water because it hits them in the face. There it is. That's a fact, man. That's a fact. So, again, everybody out there, please go pick up my new album, Can We Fall in Love? It's my ninth studio album, man. And I was really, you know what I'm saying, being vulnerable in that album as well because I wanted, you know, to go back to what real R&B was. Yes. You know, not talking about the chain I'm wearing, not talking about the clothes I'm wearing, not talking about the cars I'm driving, not talking about how many bottles I can pop in the club. You know what I'm saying? And understand that people, it's people that buy our records that don't, they, they're, they're not living a fantasy. Mm. It's reality out here, bro. Yeah. Like, you don't love me no more. What, where's the love? I don't feel the love. See, you, know Avant, brother, you were the first person, in my opinion, to really bring that reality to mainstream. Yeah. I appreciate and, that. You know, something else that I want to, I got to ask this question because I interviewed 112 and, you know, you guys have a lot in common. It's simple. Well, granted, you're one person there, a group, but you guys both <laughs> grew up around the projects and, you know, either in or around it. And it's something that mm -hmm. faced you guys daily as you guys went home or you guys left the house. And, you know, one thing I asked them, and I'm going to ask you the same question. It was like, you know, what made you guys do love music? What 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 made you guys go from like man all this attraction over here they getting money over here but what makes mm -hmm. me want to do something so different that I get a different type of attention and once again that word respect. Well, I think what it was, bro, to be totally transparent with you, it's something that we seek. Mm -hmm. See, getting money is getting money, like you know what I mean. But that ain't love. That's somebody just saying, oh my god, he he know how to get money. But as soon as he fall off. You can find and the love ain't there. So what you seek is love. When you start seeing things like when back in my time, my mother used to, my father used to come in the door and she'd be playing some Teddy Pendergrass and I could see how she lit up. I knew that I was loved. I ain't got nothing to do with no bread. Yeah. You dig know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think it was more of uh, that aspect of, yeah, I'm seeing people get money, but the way I'm seeing you get money is you stepping on everybody's toes. You know what I mean? Like, yo, bro, like you just cut your man's head off. You just did, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, of course, okay, you got the money, but I'm, I'm like, where's the love out here, though? You know what I mean? And then every woman became a bitch and a hoe, and it's like, yo, like, I know it's a different emotion somewhere around here that we could tap into, and that's why I did what I did, bro, you know? Mm -hmm. I feel it's always somebody that invests an idea or puts someone in a position to reach their dreams and make them a reality. Who do we owe to thank you for investing into your dreams? Wow. A few people, you know what I'm saying? I got to give it up to my, my, uh, my ex-manager, Eric Payton. He showed me a lot of love. I remember one time I was in Chicago and I'm recording. I'm like, yo, I got to go to work Monday, man. He like, go to work. He like, yo, bro, I'm trying to make you a boss. You can go work for them and make them rich, or you can stay here and make yourself rich. Mm. So always that always triggered to me, like, yo, that was, you know what I'm saying? And I stayed there. And hey, I, I ain't gonna, you know, I can't put my, my finances out there. Yo, I'm all right. You dig what I'm saying? <laughs> but also, uh, you know, I gotta give it up for my uncle. He passed away, you know what I'm saying? But um, I used to actually like they used to do like the steps in my basement, him and his group. And I used to have to go down there and mop the floor. So I smelt the R&B. You dig what I'm saying? I was like, yo, this is crazy. And he told me one day, like, yo, nephew, you got a nice voice. And that's all I need to hear. And then, and you know, last but not least, I got to give it up to, well, not last but not least, but I have to give it up to the legends. The legends in this game, man, that showed you how to do it. And said, yo, young man, I'm giving you this torch. You got to keep it lit. Mm. You got to keep it lit because it's people, they're following this whole movement. You know what I mean? And it's crazy to think about it, but all music is is a thought. Right. That's all it is, man. It's a, it's a thought that people latch on to. 
like a virus. They latch on to it, a thought. Mm. So I have to give a shout out to that. And then God, man, God, last but not least, but God, man, he, he's everything to me, bro. Because he reveals things to you. Now, you ain't got to listen, but he will reveal it if you ask him to do it. That's real. No, I give all glory to God for waking me up every day, for allowing me to have my children, have my wife. It's so much to give all glory to God to. And it's it's always a blessing to hear that, you know, to give credit to him for investing into making sure that that manifestation and prayer reach your vision. And from without him, is, without him is no talent. It's no thought. For, I wouldn't have nothing. He, if he didn't put it in, I wouldn't have nothing to give it to people. Oh, I haven't asked this question in a while, and I feel like you have such a great answer, and so I'm going to hit you with it. What are some of the highs and lows that you've been through so far in your career that you're willing to discuss? Oh, man, you know, um, I, for one, I took the rearview mirror out of my, my car, so I don't even like to look back, bro, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, you know, at the end of the day, I just, I, hey, I just chalk it all up, bro. I don't, you know, I don't even like to talk about any other, you know, I have different, you know, regimes of management, different regimes of different people I've hired. I don't like to get into that, bro. You know what I mean? And that's just out of all due respect, you know? Oh, yeah. To them and myself. All love, all love. You know what? On that note, let's, something that I feel that is very important that you said about investing into your career is about your uncle telling you that you got it, saying that you got the voice. And one thing I could read from, from the history is that your uncle also paid attention to, to history because he really invested into making sure that preparation was right, that that right. in the time to sound good was there, that steps was there. That was mm -hmm. artist development for Motown back in the day that they don't have anymore when it came down to the 90s and 2000s. True. It was gone. True. And so you were able to see somewhat of an early foreshadow to what you needed to embark yourself on. And, you know, what were some of your, your thoughts during those transitions? Well, you know, I have to give it up to my father when it comes to that. You know, my mom used to have me listening to, a, like, all of the R&B cats. But my father had me listening to blues singers. Mm -hmm. So he was like, yo, if you don't really do this thing, I used to ride around this pickup truck. He'd say, hey, you got to listen to this because they're telling stories that touches the soul. So, you know, I used to listen to Johnny Taylor. I used to listen to ZZ Tops. Uh, um, and, and it was just like, yo, all these different emotions and things is going on. And it's like, wow. I mean, you're talking about a gamut of different music, bro. Right. You know what I mean? And it's like, wow, so this is the art. That's what I'm looking at. It's like, yo, this ain't no, just because I can say a rhyme, I can get over. No, you got to touch people where, you know, sometimes where it hurts. You know what I mean? Like, it, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to make you feel a certain way too. Like, you know what I mean? So I look at like, if you think about it, like one of the most dominating and beautiful songs of all our times right now is Marvin Gaye's What's Going On. Yes. To this day, like that song ain't old. He's talking about the sh we going through right now, bro. Come on. So, and think about it. That song could have never been on radio. Why? Because he wasn't following radio. See, like personally, I know a lot about that brother. I, I work for his son. I'm a personal assistant for Marvin Gaye III. Dope, and dope. It is an honor and incredible opportunity just to hear some stories, just to hear oh, his man. ear and his breakdown of what he has. And one thing I learned about that brother is that right after his father had passed away, he, he was trying to uh, become a professional uh, dirt bike racer. He was a Moto X champ. And he would be the first African-American black Moto X uh, racer. And then his father passed away. And his dad was touring around the world. And he wasn't paying any taxes. Because at that point, we weren't paying taxes to the man. And right. we, we got ourselves to, to the UK and in England. And so he was doing his thing to funnel money. But as soon as his dad passed away, he had to get back to the estate. And the estate had got washed up by taxes and the yeah. IRS. And so he had to pay $12 million just to get back his estate. That's, I mean, but you got the thing is for us, it's crazy as as young artists and even Marvin them back in that time. Bro, in school they don't teach you about taxes. They don't teach you this shit still to this day. And it's like, yo, what's the percentage, especially a entrepreneur? 
what is my percentage to say, okay, I'm just going to break this off to y'all because I owe y'all, y'all, you know, ain't nobody tell me what it is, but I know I owe y'all some. Bro, ain't nobody doing that. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, I think that, you know, that's what they need to put in the schools. I've been saying that, you know, show people, you know, how to break down, especially entrepreneurs, show them how to break down the tax bracket and, you know, saying what, what it does and how, how, how to move in it. You know what I mean? Because that's what you, you know, because you're going to come back at us. You know what I mean? And you're going to come and say, yo, no, you owe me this. And I'm like, who the hell? Because I, you know, I had to get myself out of that thing. You know what I mean? But I'm like, who the hell is Uncle Sam? I ain't never seen him. Come on. That's Steph. A motherfucker you know what I'm me. That's Steph. The fuck? Hey, man, and then you look at, find out, you know, our previous pe president, shit, he only paid 700 feet. I wish I was that dude. You know what I mean? Come on. You got me kicking shit off the side of the screen just because it's like, it's so real. Man. How can we can't skate like goats like that? That's what I'm saying. It's all a game, though. Again. You, we chose this game, though. You know what I mean? We chose it. So, hey, you got to make it best for you. As, as we talked about this spectrum, I want to know what has been on this side of the spectrum. What has been your three most rewarding moments in the industry so far? Oh, man. I think it's just the fans, really. You know, and my kids, man. You know, and really just being able to cre record with great producers in the studio and, and not listening to the radio and trying to come up with something that's close to what's on the radio. You know what I mean? Like, I think you just keep yourself in such a box when you try to do that, yes. you know? And then we, you know, us as older artists, we already have a fan base. They don't want you to detour so far away from what you are. Right. To try to, you know what I'm saying? To appease the younger kids. I rather younger kids like you know I've been, I've been blessed passing young kids that you know been dropping all like a lot of my hooks and a lot of my songs on their records you know what I mean so that let me know you respect me as a, as an artist oh yeah so to me that's how I pay my respects to them you know what I mean like yo I hear read your mind from eighteen different artists you know it's just just some version of it then it making good love you know what I mean so. That's that show. Yeah, hey, look, I'm paying homage. I, I, I appreciate that. 100, bro. 100. I got to tell you my three favorite songs of yours. And okay. yeah, I could have went with some of the current ones because right now you got this one song that I've had on repeat in my playlist. Uh, it's it's uh, You Don't Love Me No More. Oh, man. Come on, man. And, and it's so deep because one is, you know, intro songs are supposed to get you that way. But number yeah. two, it makes you really reflect on what's real in your life. There you go, bro. There you and go. so that, that's something. But I couldn't put that in my top three when it comes to your music because that okay. wouldn't be telling truth. I wouldn't be true to myself. And, okay. and you know, I wouldn't be able to have testimonies like I do from your music. But I'm gonna give you my top three, and then okay. I want to know your favorite of your th your three favorite songs. But here, here's my top three. Number one, four minutes. Four minutes was something that that did so much to me because it allowed me to understand time is so valuable. Time is yes. of essence. And if if you you know if your life could end in four minutes, what is that story is gonna tell you for those four minutes? That's a fact. Number two was don't take your love away. And I was young and dumb like your son when I was 17 and I tried mm -hmm. to get married and I didn't understand that I wanted love and it, I thought I needed love. And, mm -hmm. you know, so that was something I was really yeah. able to grab. Wants, wants and needs is two different things, bro. Facts. <laughs> and number three, separated as it did the whole world when we first heard that. It, you know, that, that has to make my top three because separated, you know, mm -hmm. it, it made you feel so comfortable about moving forward. Well, you know, um, man, when you ask me for top three, I can't do it because they're all my babies. You understand? And, you know, they are emotional to me. Like, you know what I mean? When you look at separated, I was, I was that guy that was getting cheated on. And instead of going and, and busting somebody's head, I pinned in paper. You know what I'm saying? I put it in the brain. You feel what I'm saying? I brought it, my emotions, again, being vulnerable, I brought it to the paper. You feel me? So um, it's hard for me to name three because man it's all emotions like like you said don't take your love away i wrote that record in denver i remember i was in the hotel room in denver, denver and kobe was on the actual tv going through that thing in denver 
with his wife, the press conference thing. That's what Don't Take Your Love Away spawned from. You see what I'm saying? If you listen to the lyrics, I said, after the hoping and the praying and the wishing, you're right here in my face. This was the Kobe line. I've never been the one to bite my tongue, but I have not one word to say. That's when I saw him, that's what I looked. And I'm like, Kobe was so cocky at the time. She had it, he was pinned to the right. He was pinned dead to the right. It was like, yo, I just, I just gotta sit here and listen. You know what I'm saying? I gotta come up with something because, hey, you got me. You feel me? And I was like, that's when I just, you know, I, I never seen a man so humble at that time, man. It was like, wow. And then I started putting myself in that position saying, what if I had to make a State of the Union address to my girl in front of everybody? How unfair is that, bro? I'm at my and I'm at my worst. I have to put my worst on TV right now. Right. No. Deep, bro. Deep. So that's what that's what really like sparked me to to, to write that record. Don't take your love. Wow. That shit gives me goosebumps because you know the iconic story of Kobe Bryant and Vanessa Bryant is you know it's it's a love story of just someone really trusting their heart and trusting their soul yeah, that's it bro and that's what that's what that's what love and respect is all about now you guess what after he did that he gained so much respect for his wife bro why because he put love first you see what i'm saying he had to learn how to respect her. they got divorced and remarried there it is but Come guess on. what he that would have never happened again you know what I'm saying? If nothing else, she would have never found ever how found out about it. You know what? Since since we got two out of three of my favorite songs of yours, can I get the backstory of four minutes? I'm normally not too much because <laughs> I feel like that's taken away from other radio shows. They do. No, it's all good. I'm here for you, bro. Four minutes was crazy because I got to I worked with the underdogs on that record, and they already had the hook. They already had the hook. I only got four minutes. Oh, it's kind of dope. And then it was like, yo, we want you to write about a girl about to get married to this man. And I said, no, bro. I said, the way I hear this, it ain't got nothing to do with no marriage, bro. Like, you know what I mean? Like, mm. the I, I hear this as this man has been messing around on his girl and she, she ain't having it no more. She's tired of it. So now he got to rapidly, that's why I started speeding the words up the way I did. He has to rapidly try to explain the shit before the time is out. Mm. So that was the whole, you know, pardon me if I'm talking fast, I'm stumbling all over my world. You see what I'm saying? I tried to break it off the top. Said you were leaving town. I thought I'd be the one to know first. And I also got that from my homies, Bone Thugs and Harmony. I, you know, hey, I'm from Ohio, baby. I'm from Cleveland. So, hey, much respect to the homies. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. Shout out Crazy Bone. He fuck with the show. No, that's my man. It's for sure. Absolutely. Uh, I, you know, I got one more thing that I'm gonna put a transition into my segments. But you know, in my opinion, I think you would be a New York Times bestseller. You would be mm -hmm. a Academy Award winning screenplay writer if you didn't choose music. You know, in my opinion, what would be a career mm -hmm. that you would succeed in the same way as music if you chose another path? Oh man, that's a good question. Uh, probably a keynote speaker or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like we have so much knowledge. The thing I, what I, I hate about just the way we have to come up is that we are the creative people, okay? And the way that they, I hate to say this, but the way that they keep the chains on us is that you know my daughter had some homework the other day and um now the way she broke it down was you had to do it three ways to equal to one thing now i knew the way to get to the answer the one answer i knew the one way so i'm saying to myself why the fuck do i gotta do two different two other ways Man, that what is what what's the point you see what I'm saying? But this is the system that they have under us. It's like, yo, no. Now I know you know how to do that. Now do it this way. It's like, why? 
And that's why I, I think the system's trying to hold everyone back. And I, I say that to say this. In the jobs, you, they, you know, they might throw $15, $20 an hour at you. They want you to forget about your gift that God gave you so that they can appease you with $20 an hour so you can just go ahead and forget about your career. Just make me rich. I have personally been through that, brother. I got paid $15 an hour and I made them millions at a restaurant because I understood to put the customer first and make them, you know, be an advocate for them and they'll pay anything it costs to come to this restaurant. And they were overpriced pizza. And I made them millions and it took God to make me uncomfortable because I enjoyed helping people. I enjoyed blessing people that couldn't afford the pizza because I had a, a, a place of stability to give away free pizzas and giving back to the community. But God was like, you know, why are you settling for this? And it wasn't until the owner was like, I want you to make you an owner and you're a, a different last name than your own. I'm like, first of all, you got me fucked up. Right. Second of all, that's not my name. And that's not all I'm here to do is just to help you guys make money. And I thank them because that set off the light to get me on my way out of there. And then the way how God works is he put me in places I couldn't say no to. And it kept my mind going. And, you know, I, I caught myself trying to give up on music. And then God had me at the BT Awards as a seat filler. And then going to the BT go. Awards after party and going <laughs> in with, with uh, Johnny Gill of all people as his entourage and just like just. It's so, I can't make this up, but that's the way how God had, had to break me to understand Listen, what's in front of me. What's real is that we don't know what the path is, but if we cut it off ourselves, we'll never get to the journey. You dig what I'm saying? And that's what we're doing. We're, we're cutting our face off. We're cutting you're blocking, ourselves off, bro. You're blocking your blessing. You're blocking and other is, bro. blessings. There it is. That's why I said, you know, we can be keynote speakers because we can tell the people you know what the truth is we can be honest with you like yo i tell everybody if you if your boss is is, is willing to pay you 20 to thirty thousand dollars an hour then you're worth way more than that and this is what this pandemic is showing me though you know what i'm saying get out there and hustle understand find that dream that you used to have now let's get back into that dream because guess what i would always have my dream if you, even if you hire me again, I can still be focusing on my dream. Because a lot of people have lost their dream. Why? Because you gave me a job. You said you could be here for 40 years. And, and you pay, and you paying me a dollar a, a, every five years extra. What does, it makes no sense. It makes no sense. And guess what? Now I see a lot of people trying to pick their dreams back up. Cause that's the only thing that matters in this world, bro. Like I said, music ain't nothing but a thought. Think about the things that you've been through since you walked away from that piece of job. You didn't know what you was, what God had you going. You was just waking up, putting your clothes on, putting your shoes on. Like, Lord, please bless me to get, you know what I'm saying? Now you starting to see the path. Come on. I went to three award shows. In total, I went to three after parties that everyone did not have a ticket or nothing, but God made a way for me to stumble upon or go inside somewhere I didn't realize I can get myself into. And in the moment I realized that people were asking me, what am I doing here? What do I do? And I didn't have an answer. I, I, I did motivational speaking when I was 17. I was homeless in high school, graduated with straight A's. They put me in the newspaper. It's an article up there. And I did motivational speeches from it. But what they doesn't tell you is that I got arrested for robbery two weeks later because mm. the street life was that much more shinier to me oh, yeah. than having anything else. And so needless to say, that shit woke my game up. But at the same time, it allowed me to say, hey, back in the day, I did motivational speeches. So when that moment came and they asked me what I did, I said motivational speeches, not realizing I'm talking to Robbie Reed, which is one of the biggest casting directors Sweet. in Hollywood. <laughs> and I slept on my own opportunity. And I've been acting since I was four years old. And, you know, it's crazy how God will set you up and, and you won't even realize that you missed the alley-oop until you hit the wall. I'm like, damn, I didn't hit no brakes. I didn't have nothing to slow me down. It's you supposed to slow yourself down. There it is, bro. Again, we talked about it. I got to get out my own way. You know what I'm saying? God is always willing to bless. But guess what? You want somebody else's situation. Mm. Instead of, right, instead of you following the path he's giving you, you like, yo, no, catapult me to this next level. 
like you did such and such. Why ain't I on such and such? You know what I'm saying? And he's like, yo, you're not there yet. Why? You're not there yet. I'm going to keep that word. That word is very important, yet. Because a lot of people give up on their dreams so early. Because of the you know word. What I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, yet, yet it's very important, bro. As short as it might be. Like I tell people, they say, yo, uh, no, they told me no. I said, no, it's too short of a word for me to stop. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, couldn't have. That's if it look if if you if you turn the letters around then you own. Come on, you see what I'm saying? So hey, look, don't let nobody tell you no, and that be the last thing you heard. And you're like, yo, I just shut it down from that point. I, you know, I explained that to my son. You know, much respect to him as well. He got on on his um he he got his own he's he's on an entrepreneur right now. He doing his thing. Go to GC Snaps, pick up some of his apparel in there. He's a, a photographer. So I'm just trying to show him like. There's different levels of this game, man. You are going to know so much about so much that can't nobody stop you. No one. You know what I mean? And when I walk in there with my credentials, like you said, when I walk in there with my credentials, you're going to have to open the door. It don't matter what I'm here for and who I'm here for. You got to open the door because God said open the door. Yes, yes. And, and also to those, everybody that, you know, is working so hard, for these companies, you know what I'm saying? And, and making them tons of money, like you said, your people, you know what I mean? Making them tons of money. Always remember this, your boss will never pay you enough to live next to him. Whew. Ooh, I'm gonna say that back. Your boss will never pay you enough to live next to him. If you don't yeah. understand what's real, then go ahead and ask yourself if you make enough money to live next to your boss. And there you I'm go, bro. Fuck up, and I guarantee you that's something I won't do. I know this brother ain't going to shut up because he just put so much gems out there. I think I might get a bill. He even sang on this motherfucker. I might get a bill. <laughs> Damn. And that's real, bro. Always understand that, man. No. Your boss will never pay you enough to live next to him. Come on, bro. He won't even allow you to get enough money to fix your car. Man, come on, bro. And guess what? Make you the worst sooner. And he don't even know how to do your job. That's what's so crazy. The job that you are suffering and making sure that he get paid for, he don't even know how to do your job, bro. It's crazy. So real, bro. That's so real. I changed the way they did things. I did every door direct mail, and we did, See? you know, gave them coupons. They never did coupons before. Yeah, I had this idea, bro, that, you know, if I had an artist and I could send a flyer out to everyone's door, how they going to tell me no if they see it? If you give them something they look at and like, they can't tell mm -hmm. you no. They're going to get it. And then, you know, augmented reality is a whole new thing. Mm -hmm. So now you can get a preview of what you're getting in the mail. Man. Come on, man. See, you, you, was, a, yeah, you was ahead of your game. You was ahead of the game. Again, they couldn't. They, they might have been able to make a pizza, but they couldn't sell the way you sell. You see what I'm saying? That's why they needed you. Mm. And that's why I tell everybody, yes, not your only your vote. You are needed everywhere. We are needed, bro. Facts. When you when the motherfuckers gotta come out of them damn suits, bro, them Gucci suits and Fendi suits and shit and have to do the shit that we do, we we do. Oh, they don't wanna do that. Hell no. You know what I'm saying? They don't wanna do that. They don't wanna do the footwork, bro. The real the real ish. They don't want that. On, so I just have, you know, I have to explain to, to, to the youth, especially the, the young kids now, you are so valuable. Bro, like, understand that without us, this world would not fucking spin. That's why it shows right now in this pandemic. Because we are the generators of money. The shit is at a, it's, it's, I hey man, look, bro, we at a fucking snail's pace. We at a stalemate right now so at the end of the day without us and our small businesses you know what i'm saying without the small businesses the world cannot continue to go to where it was man. right now we suffering like hell man you are preaching right now because it takes a small man to make a big man look big who who else is he supposed to crush who's gonna be the underdog when you got no. someone that's already trying to take all that credit you know where where is None the that. American? That. It take a small it take a, a small man to make a big man. That's a real talk. You know what I'm saying? I gotta look down on somebody. 
Come on. You dig what I'm saying? In the same <laughs> reflection, it took it took a David to knock down a Goliath. There it is. So we gotta always understand that we are needed like crazy, but we are also to be respected. That's where we go back to that. Because guess what? If I respect you, if if my my um fans respect me or I respect them, then I'm always giving them what they need. I'm always showing that. But when it started to get to the point where it's just like, no, I'm I'm the reason I'm so big. No, bro, like, think about it. If them, if them 10 million motherfuckers didn't buy that album, you'd just be a cold nigga in a pizza spot, chilling. Come on, come on. So Wonder guess what? Here gonna come. The, fans, the fans are to be respected, bro. That's why I never, ever, you know what I'm saying? Try my best. If, if I have ever disrespected one of y'all, I'm so sorry for it. But the truth of the matter is, you guys are the reason for not just our business, but for every business that's rocking right now. Right now they're saying, you know, you got the uh, postal service or you got, you know, UPS. You got, man, all them businesses flourishing. Why? Because people online buying stuff. TV, you know what I'm saying? On TV, you know, Netflix flourishing right now because people looking. Man, people, we are to be respected, bro. Yes. Without us, the world, you, you, can, you ain't got nothing. Come on, come on. All right, I'm going to put a pause on the entertainment and, and you know, mm -hmm. that, that side of the coin. I got my two segments, and then we're going to wrap it up. My first segment is my awareness segment, and, you know, this is near and dear to my heart and so many others because I don't know about yourself, but uh, I didn't have a dad or, or anyone to talk to me about when we got pulled over. They talked about what to do in the situation beforehand, how to maneuver, how to get up out of there. But no one explained to us what to do when the lights come on, that high beam hits the back of your neck, and then that blurt sound comes on, and now you're pulling over. <laughs> and I asked every guest of mine, you know, when was the last time they are pulled over, and what's some advice they can give in the situation of getting pulled over and getting out of it safely? Well, you know what? It's weird, you know, that question, all because you know, there's no right way to tell somebody, you know what I'm saying, to deal with being pulled over. It's no right way. Exactly. You know what I mean? Because a lot of times it's like, it all depends on what attitude this, this motherfucker got. You know, if they just felt like, okay, your car looks too good, I'm going to whoop your ass to death. I don't care what you say or what you do, bro. It's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Feel what I'm saying? So it, it's hard for me to try to answer that, but I would always say, you know, Show respect. Go right back to that word, bro. Show respect for everyone. And even if I get my ass whooped to death, I can always say, at least I did show respect to whoever I did, you know, I work with. Mm. Feel what I'm saying? But always hold that dignity within yourself. Show self-respect and show respect for others. And I'm so happy that we've been talking about the word respect for so long that we forgot to add in the self-respect too. Because as much as we give off respect, you have to respect yourself first. Because if you don't respect yourself, nobody else is going to respect you. It is, bro. A lot of people are out here, and I'm glad we got to that. Because a lot of people are out here so lost that they're looking for that L word from everybody. Uh, I, I need somebody to love me. I need somebody to love me. But I'm like, okay, but do you love yourself? Do you respect yourself? Because if you do, so I remember, you know, coming up, I, you know, I ain't no old, old cat, but I remember coming up and you meet somebody in the club, you had to meet them five times before you got their phone number. You know what I'm saying? Now, you just get in the club, you done pot, you done done everything, you know what I'm saying? Before you got home, before, before you left the damn parking lot. <laughs> you didn't even have to leave the dance floor, you know, be way to the, like, yo, the and bathroom. You, and 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 you you want me to wife you? Like you want me to we you did all this to me. And you know, again, I'm not saying that, you know, I wouldn't, but at the end of the day, you need to respect yourself more. Mm. That's all I'm saying. Come on, know your worth. Man, that's real heavy, bro. Know your worth, man. That's it. But again, we have to continue to feed this thing to, especially to the youth, because of us older people, we know better. We need to continue to feed. And I'm saying it, you know, in, in the light of, 
like I said, in businesses, in music, know your worth. Know you know that without this, without you, I don't care how small your job is. Without you, the world can't continue. It can't not continue to go on. So if you take it from there, then you will take it to the club. Then you will take it to this. And you'll say, yo, now I'm a little more than that. I know that. You know what I'm saying? I know who I am. So, you know, I think it, it, it has to be a trickle-down effect, though. You know what I'm saying? You can take it and use it in any of your entities. Mm. Powerful. I got my next segment. It's called Impulse Q&A. I got impulse questions I wrote down earlier. I do want your impulse answer. Uh, you don't like the question? Just say pass, but I do want you to answer three questions. Are you ready? I'm ready. Question number one. What is the funniest thing you've seen happen in the studio? Wow, funniest thing I've seen happen in the studio. Man. Oh, man, somebody come in, man, and uh, they really didn't sound good, but I had a clown dude that was pumping them up so tough that they had them, like, on high, bro. Like, you know what I mean? Like, And it, it was just, you know, everybody was just, you know, and then we, we still didn't make it like it was just a joke against them. We just had fun with the, the scenario. I mean, we had a ball with that thing, man, for real. And I'm talking about sounding trash. <laughs> you are the next. You are the next. And they go in, they like, y'all really feel like? Yeah, we oh, this. Oh, we had them on 10. Whew. I don't even want to know when you guys let them down. That's none of my business. Question <laughs> number two. What is one thing you love, but you wish you hated? Wow, wow. Oh wow, that's a good one. Uh, could it be like past stuff, maybe? It could be anything, you know. I love I love work, but it's sometimes so crazy I wish because I hate you know what? You know what, bro? It's hard for me to say I don't like the word hate. Mm. You know what I mean? And I'm I'm not trying to mess up your QA, you know what I mean? But it, the truth of the matter is, if I give you that much energy to say that I hate you. Mm. I'm, I'm I'm letting you take all of who I am. You know what I mean? Like I'm spending way too much time on you, bro. So I'm saying, so it's hard for me to even equate the two together. I ain't trying to hate or nothing. Mm. Cause I ain't got that much time to get. You know what? I love that answer. Cause that's <laughs> something that people don't, once again, time, and then time goes. You know what's so crazy? It's, it's great that we haven't having this conversation. I've, I've had people that be like, yo, AV, you seem like you never, like, even if somebody upset with you and they want to fight you and all this and this and that, you never, like, get out your car. I said, I will never allow someone to take something from me. Mm. You can never take my character from me. Now, if, if I want to fight you, it ain't even going to no question. I'm going to knock you in the fucking head. That's it. You dig what I'm saying? But for, for me to allow you to take my energy and then all of a sudden I do something to you where I end up in jail and I said, I didn't have to go through that because I wasn't even feeling the way he was feeling. You see what I'm saying? So we got to watch how we allow people to take our energy and make it negative. See, I don't want to get too deep, man, but I'm just being honest with you, bro. You uh, know what I mean? We, 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 we allow this to happen every day. Or we allow, either you allow it or you allow people around you to feed you. Oh, man, he was on some other shit the other night. It was like, yo, it's, if it's over with, it's over with. I don't care what he was on. You're not about to feed this. You're not about to feed this flame and, and make it a fire. Come on. And it's so crazy because this is this is how I operate with my people, you know what I'm saying? And not to make the long the, the question long, but you know, even in my business, like I, you know, I, I give everyone the fair share. If we got an issue, if you got an issue, guess what? I'm gonna get on the phone, you're gonna get on the phone, and he's gonna get on the phone. We're gonna iron this out together right now. We don't need to talk about it no more after this. Mm. And they say, yo, man, I respect you so much for doing that. Instead of all these different conversations being had. You see what I'm saying? And then all, you know, poison being spread it all over the place. Let's just get on here, you know, and, and box it out. If we have to box it out, if we have to talk it out, handle it right here. Mm. Cause I'm gonna get, I don't care if you've been with me for two years or, or 20, 
I'm going to give you the same respect as that two years. I get it at 20. You know, that's something that people have not really understood to learn how to communicate. If you want to communicate that you're the baddest motherfucker, you want to fight someone that's the baddest motherfucker, then y'all fight. But doing all this wolfing and dragging shit out is going to get some people really hurt. We're going to have some shit where, you know, RIP this person.